Hey guys, this is a mass sensor test for the 2004 Mercedes C230 W203 chassis. Uh, you may not be able to see the original. It's still in. It's right here where my hand is. And then I got the one I just bought today. This one uh, was less than $30. I know I shouldn't buy something that cheap. But, you know, I like to test the cheap stuff out to see, you know, how long it uh, will actually work for. This thing doesn't even have numbers on it. And I mean, it doesn't have any numbers on it. So it is real, real cheap. But it does have uh, inside of it different kinds of resistors uh, connected to the parts that sense the air. But I don't know if you could see it. Uh, let me get a flashlight. Okay, so you see that? And my other one doesn't have it. That one you see to the left is just two metal pieces on my original one. But this one actually has something attached to it. Maybe a, a thermistor or something. And then there's another one back here. Uh, out to focus because I can't touch the phone. But anyway, there's another one back there. And there's the copper piece. I think it's copper. It could be brass. So there's actually, it actually looks like three parts. This actually looks different than mine. So I'm not sure if it's going to work. But the plug looks the same. I'm going to try to fit the plug in first right now. And make sure that that can fit. Okay, so the plug fits, but here's what I want to do. I want to test this for you guys because uh, in my other video I tested it, and I tested the old one. And I think I told you that it seems like it's bad compared to a good one that another YouTuber was testing. So, I set my meter on diode. Now, I'm going to touch the leads together so you can see it. It beeps, the light lights up, and it goes to zero. Now, yours may only go to one. Maybe sometimes they don't go to zero. Could be a dead battery or something. So, let's test the old one. So, right now, I have my positive to the first terminal on my old sensor all the way to the left like this now you might not be able to see it but you can see the meter if it registers something I don't know if I can fit these in here maybe I can okay okay you see how low that is that's not normal 251 is not normal. Now, if I reverse these, I shouldn't get a reading. Remember, I'm testing uh, pins 1 and 2 on the sensor. Look at that. I'm getting the same thing on diode. And that's not supposed to be like that. Let me get another connection here. See that? You're not supposed to get a reading, I believe, if you switch it around. Now, I'm new to this, so like all my other videos, don't go according to me. I, you know, only know very little about cars. I only, you know, fool around with them and, you know, I get my diagnostic tool out and I just test and see 
uh, if I could find a problem and then what I'll do is I'll do like the mechanics do I'll just keep buying parts and um, you know if the pot don't work and it's in perfect condition I can always return it I get my money back so I don't waste any money um, okay so let's test the new one now let's see what this register I don't know if you could see this. It might be it. Okay, so I'm going to test one and two. Okay, uh, positive to the left. Okay. I think you could see it. But anyway, keep your eye on the meter because that's more important. Okay, so positive to the left terminal. Negative to the right. Okay, so I I'm not getting anything. Okay, so let's switch them around. Because don't forget, the first one on this car should be ground, or it could be like a signal or signal ground. The second one is positive. All right, now I got the black lead to the first one. Let's see if I can focus a little more. Okay, so the black lead is to pin one. I got the meter set on diode and the red lead is on pin two. And look at that. We get a nice reading, a high reading now remember the other one, the old one, was about 250 compared to 10. And plus, it registered when I switched the leads. This one, if you got a positive and negative, there's gotta be a diode in here. So it's it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't register both ways. That diode inside that old one is probably shorted out somehow. It actually looks like it's connected to a resistor, maybe, in series and shorted out. So, anyway, let's see what happens if we put the negative lead to the first one again. And I'll try the third one. Okay, so that's the third one. What is the third one? Uh, okay, so... Wait, hold on. Okay, so the third one, I believe, is signal. Let's try that again. Okay, so we got a nice high reading. Now, um... I'm going to put the positive lead on pin four. We'll see what happens. Okay, so one, pin one, and pin four are grounds. Okay, you see that? Pin one and pin four are grounds. Now the next one on this car isn't used. There's no wire connected to it, but I'm gonna put it there anyway. We'll see if anything happens. We actually get a reading on there, so maybe this uh, sensor, uh, this math sensor could be used for another car. Okay, so that's what we get on the last one. And again, it's not used in this car. Okay, so let's go again. I'm going to do the same thing to the old sensor that's still on the car. Negative to pin one, and then positive to pin three. Okay, so that's what I get on one and three. And don't forget, three, is, I, I believe, is the signal wire. But don't go according to me. You know, look on the internet. Okay, so that's three. Now I'm going to go back to the new one again. Okay, so what is this reading? Let's see. All right, like 1094. 
let's see what we get on here remember pins one and three okay so it's, it's a little different uh, you know 1094 1349 it's it's not too bad so half of it must be good but it's definitely bad all right so that's what a new sensor should read like um, you know like I said number one pin one is ground I believe and pin two is 12 volts and pin three is signal and pin four is ground now I don't know why these are both ground But, um, like I said, one, I heard someone mention something about a ground sensor wire or something like that. But, you know, I, I don't know if that's correct or not. But I also don't know why they would put two grounds on here. Seems kind of strange. Uh, what else could I tell you about this? So, I guess what I'm going to do is... I already tested the voltage coming out of the car. I get the right voltage, you know, coming out of this clip. And uh, the sensor wire works, it fluctuates. So I know that's good. And I'm not getting over voltage. If you get over voltage, you will destroy this thing. Um, some people have purposely burned these out with only 16 volts so if you jump your car um, maybe a battery died out or you use a jumper pack or you use uh, any kind of uh, jumper pack you know this part is very sensitive you probably will burn it out um, you know if your car starts shaking after or you get an end check engine light that that's most likely going to be the problem now i think if you jumped it with another car I don't think that you would burn this part out because it's, it should be the correct voltage. But when you use um, some kind of jumper pack, it sends, for some reason, a jolt of, um, you know, a lot in there. More than, you know, more than 15, 16. I, I've seen 17, 18 go in there uh, for a split second or two. And that's enough to kill anything. Uh, you'll probably have problem with your SAM. You know your fuse box uh some of the the, the um ic chips might burn out and your headlights won't work and you'll get that sign um you know the L led display in your car will say front right light and you would think it's the light bulb but you have really got no power to it now don't forget if you put a new light bulb you have to turn the key off for about one minute or at least 30 seconds then turn it back on to reset the SAM for that light bulb because after it knows it's not detected it turns it off it doesn't keep trying to put power into the bulb because it thinks something's wrong so it will the fuse box the part inside uh, will turn off usually there's IC chips in there and you can change them because I've changed them in in this car and a 2005 and I think I made a vi I might have responded to someone that was asking if I remembered the model number of the ICs and I said no at first but then I was repairing a refrigerator board and I happened to find about you know 10 or 15 in there and those were the ones I repaired the board with and I had no blinkers, no windshield wipers, um, no brake lights, no turn signal, the car was shaking. Um, there's one thing that still doesn't work and I can't get it working is the rain sensor. And the headlights, uh, when it gets dark at night, they automatically come on. They seem to, if I put it on auto, the lights are on at all times. So I can't get my wipers to uh, have a delay. And... Uh, the rain sensor doesn't work and uh, the light sensor doesn't work but I don't know if um, that has something to do with that I did try to buy another rain sensor but it didn't work 
so I don't know why. Maybe I did something wrong. I don't know. I think I tried to disconnect the battery too to reset it, but it still didn't work. Maybe it was bad. Maybe I just... Maybe somebody else did the same thing and jumped the car and sent too much voltage and burned it out. Who knows, you know? One day I'll order another one. Uh, well, let's see. What else could I tell you? I don't know. Everything else seems to be working on this car. Uh, I did have this uh, connect disconnected, the MAF sensor, because the car runs 10 times better without it. Yeah, if I plug that in, the car is terrible. It chugs when it's in drive. I mean, it's, you know, it's really, it's really bad when you have it in drive and you stop at a light. Yeah, the engine's surging up and down, up and down, sometimes fast, sometimes slow. Uh, when I take that out, it'll go away. But the car has to be warmed up. Don't forget that. You can't, in the morning, your car will shake really bad for about a minute or two with that plug out. But then uh, it'll idle out smooth. You won't even know that's disconnected car has still has massive power um you know no problems so anyway i am going to try to install this hopefully it works i wrote a number on here i don't know if you could see it but this is this is the number that was on the box um for the sensor now, I don't know if that's the original part number because I don't have the original part. I have some crappy one in here that ever since I installed it, the engine never ran right. I told the guy, I says, look, there's something wrong with this. It's coming up the code uh, 171 or 172. I told him, I said, it, there's something wrong with it. It's bad. I said, all my wiring's good. I checked the voltage and everything, but... He says, I guarantee it's good. And he convinced me that it was good. But don't let anyone convince you. If you think something's wrong, you should return it. All right? All right, so I'm going to put this part in. And uh, maybe I'll make a part two. And I'll let you know if this one works or not. And remember, this is uh, really cheap. It's like $26, $28, I think. Uh, but I like to try the cheap stuff to see if it works. And I don't like to put a lot of money into this car because it's almost got 300,000 miles on it. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.